AITA because I won't buy food for my ex and our kids. My ex and I divorced when our kids were young. The kids are 12 and 15 now. We have been divorced for 7 years now. We have 50 and 50 custody and she remarried so spousal support is done. Her new husband recently left her. I don't know and I'm not interested in the particulars. In my opinion he didn't seem like a terrible guy and he left her their house. Once again I have no idea of debt load or anything like that. She called me last week to see if I could please help her out with some food. She said that she had run through her budget for food for her and the kids and basically begged me to help her out. I asked her to give me a few minutes and I would call her back. I talked to my girlfriend, who lives with me, and we agreed that we could spare some food. We have a freezer full of elk, venison, and wild hog, as well as a well-stocked pantry. We also have beef, pork, and chicken. I called my ex back and told her to come by and pick up a big load of groceries. This is where it got weird. She said she didn't want groceries. She wanted me to give her money for Uber Eats or something. I said no. I have two weeks worth of food that you can have, but I'm not giving you money for takeout. She called me a jerk for expecting her to be grateful for my scraps, that I was expecting her to be all domestic. Everything I was going to give her was either frozen meat, canned veggies, fresh vegetables from the garden, and pasta, rice in unopened bags. I want my kids to eat well. Both of my kids hunt and my son, the older one, is a pretty good cook. He regularly makes meals for all of us at my house. Both kids eat game meat as well as store-bought. I honestly thought I was doing what she asked. I told my girlfriend not to bother packing anything up. I texted both kids and told them to let me know if they were actually going hungry and I would take care of everything. Both kids texted back and said there was food in the house that just needed to be prepared. Both of them also said that if I was willing to spare some of the elk and hog roasts they would take them. I laughed and said I would take them over later. My ex however is telling everyone that I am trying to manipulate her into behaving like a housewife and refusing to buy food for my kids. Some people are taking her side and saying that I'm a D for not helping her out. I don't think I'm in the wrong. But maybe I'm missing something. AITA hey, for showing my mom the letter my sister wrote to me before she died. I 16 male lost my sister Birdie last year. Birdie was 20 when she died. She had been diagnosed with cancer a year before her death. She knew she was dying so she made a will for the very few things she had. It was mostly sentimental childhood stuff she had. Old stuffies and she had a necklace that our dad bought her. Stuff like that. It wasn't a lot. But she left it all to me. She also wrote a letter to me before she died. But anyway, I was the only person who got anything from Birdie. She left our grandparents in charge of everything until I'm 18 or until I'm out of mom's house. The problem with this is mom has other kids. Birdie and I lost our dad when we were both kids. Mom remarried. Neither of us really cared much for mom's husband and when mom had more kids, we didn't feel the same about them as we did each other. Birdie was more vocal while I didn't say anything. Mostly I didn't want to fight with mom over it and I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But Birdie and mom never really got along and it was only worse after dad died and then mom remarried. The fact Birdie left nothing for our half-siblings and never even wrote them a goodbye letter bothers mom and it really upset them because they wanted to know why she wrote to me and left me her stuff but not them. They wanted to read my letter but I said no. It became a fight with mom then and she wanted to know why Birdie left the rest of the family nothing and why even when she knew she was dying she couldn't find a way to embrace the other kids enough to give them something, a small goodbye. I showed mom the letter because Birdie wrote a lot about her feelings and mentioned things she and I talked about when mom wasn't around. I knew the letter would be a lot. Birdie said clearly she never loved or cared about the other kids at all and wanted me to know that she didn't want them to have anything but if I felt differently. If I ended up loving them one day and wanted to give them something of hers, that she wouldn't be mad. Mom read the whole thing twice, if not three times, and then she asked me why I had shown her the letter and what did I want to do with her. She was so mad she was shaking and she told me I was never to show my half-siblings and I pointed out I had said no to them reading it already. Nothing else was said that day but then mom told me I was cruel for rubbing my sister's words in her face and she wanted me to know she might never be able to forgive me for it. She told me forgiveness would be off the table if I ever breathed a word of it to her other kids. AITA. AITA for telling my 14-year-old daughter that she's average looking. I 39 female have a very insecure daughter 14 who has a depressingly unhealthy obsession with her looks. She often avoids mirrors and pictures because her mood instantly drains when she sees herself. She constantly asks her father and me if we think she's pretty and we always tell her the same thing, that she's a beautiful girl inside and out. As I understand how most teenage girls are with their body image as I was one at some point myself, my daughter's vanity is not only becoming exhausting to those around her, but I fear it's causing her to slowly lose herself. Yesterday, I decided to sit her down to chat with her about this, to discuss what's bothering her, and to see if she's willing to visit a therapist. She told me she didn't want to talk about it, but as her mother, of course, I'm going to be worried about her, so I insisted. She finally agreed. A few minutes into this conversation, she asked exactly this, Mom, I want you to be completely honest with me. That means no sugarcoating. The kids at my school think I'm ugly and say I look like a bird because I have a big nose. Do you really think I'm beautiful, or are you just lying? I'm an honest person, so I gave her the most honest answer I had. 
I told her she was average looking like most people in the world are and that it's not a bad thing to have an average appearance. She immediately got up and left without saying a word and just went into her room for the rest of the night. Today, she has been cold and distant, and I think I upset her, which wasn't my intention at all. AITA. AITA for putting pressure on my sister after she found out her husband got another woman pregnant. My sister has been married for 10 years and she has three children with her husband. She found out two weeks ago that her husband cheated on her at least a dozen times and got the other woman pregnant. This, of course, has been the most awful thing for my sister and I have been supporting and comforting her ever since she learned what happened. My sister has spoken like she is heavily leaning towards staying with her husband so their kids' lives don't get turned upside down. She has said that she could not be around the child though and would never accept them. I understand her feelings are all over the place and that she's still raw with all of this. But when she talked about staying and mentioned her feelings for the child I felt like I needed to step in and this is where I might be a jerk. So there is some background as to why I feel so strongly. Our dad was the result of an affair. He was not American and his country of birth did not give divorce as an option. So his father's wife stayed and he ended up with custody of dad. Dad was made to suffer for his birth and it was something that really weighed on dad for the rest of his life. He said he was born hated and he knew he would die hated if his half-siblings were still alive in his country of birth. His childhood was miserable and there were times he wondered how he survived his childhood. It was rough and he moved to America young to start anew and have a better life. We were told about this a few times and I always think of dad and the pain he carried because of his childhood. So I truly feel divorce is better and especially when it's so easily available here versus what dad went through and what his father's wife went through with no options to leave. This is why I told my sister she shouldn't stay just to keep her kids' lives from turning upside down. I pointed out that it was not healthy for anyone. I told her to think of dad. She told me I shouldn't be putting pressure on her right now. That she knows what dad went through but this is her kids' lives. It's her life. She told me I wasn't helping anymore and that's what she needed. Help via me listening to her and shutting up about leaving. Then she told me I freaking sucked right now and I should be more worried about her than anyone. AITA. AITA for telling my niece she looked pretty. My stepsister Kate 34 has always had a complex about physical appearance. It caused a lot of issues for her and all of us over the years and stopped her and I really having a relationship. She got therapy in her mid-20seconds and eventually got to the point of what she calls aesthetic neutrality, which means she never comments on anyone's appearance and we are asked not comment on hers, positively or negatively. Fair enough. She enforces this with her 7-year-old daughter Zara as well. She asked from the time Zara was born that we never make comments relating to Zara's appearance, even if it was nice things. Everyone in the family normally follows this. A few days ago, we were all visiting my parents' country house for the weekend, and Zara and my five-year-old, Anya, were playing dress-up. They came downstairs and my daughter ran over to me and my husband to show us the outfit and we said she looked beautiful in her dress. My husband took Anya to get a snack and Zara came over to me looking pretty dejected and asked if she looked pretty as well. Maybe it was just me being too soft but I couldn't look at her and not answer, given that she'd asked me directly, so I said yes. Her face lit up and she left the room to get a snack as well. Kate immediately rounded on me, telling me I was undermining her parenting and I know we're not supposed to make those kind of comments. She said disregarding her wishes as a mother was bad enough but lying to Zara is even worse and is going to set her up for failure in the future as she measures everything by appearances when she isn't good looking. I understand where Kate is coming from, I really do, and I said as much, but I just didn't have strength to say anything else when Zara was standing right there. Kate is now mad at me and saying she isn't sure she wants me babysitting until I can respect her choices on how to raise her kid. My stepdad and mother are on my side, but my husband says I probably should have just redirected Zara to her mother given what Kate is like and I probably did mess up a little bit. Was I that wrong? Again, I do understand where Kate is coming from, but in the moment I don't think I handled it that terribly.